They can be crazy fandoms, yeah. Bizarre is probably the first one that comes to my head. Crazy? The fandoms can be crazy. Fandoms, brilliant. Full stop, yes. Fandom puzzled over Johnsonian statements. That was a quote in 1903. It was also the first time the word fandom was used from an article in the Cincinnati Enquirer. Today in 2019, the word fandom can be found everywhere on the internet. I think we, we kind of always have fandoms, like, but the internet is just kind of blowing them up. Like, people can now get together more, and people that wouldn't have met each other before can now connect through the internet, which is kind of amplified the concept of the fandom. What is the concept of fandoms? The concept of a fandom is a group of people bonding over their common love for something. Or as the Oxford Dictionary would put it, quote, The fans of a particular person, team, fictional series, etc. regarded collectively as a community or subculture, unquote. A lot of fandoms exist nowadays. Some people can be more invested in fandoms than others, and it can be difficult knowing what exactly it is and what it means to people. For the people invested, conventions exist, like the one that took place in Glasgow September 2018, MCM Comic Con. A convention or a con is a place for fans all around the world to get together and dress up as their favourite characters and more. I feel conventions are a great place for like for every fandom to get together. You can meet new people through going to conventions and it is a really great experience. You get compliments, you get to meet all the new people in their great cosplays. I feel like it's just such a great experience. The longing of meeting fellow fans has always been there. As stated, the word fandom was first used in 1903, but the concept of fandoms has existed longer than that. I suppose it's big as like book clubs. I yeah. mean, book clubs have existed, existed for, well, they've not existed forever, but they've existed for, you know, a long time and a lot of people are part of the book club. That's essentially just a place where a bunch of people that are in the same, have the same interests come together and they talk about it and they enjoy each other's I think the concept of it has been around for a very long time. However, what often counts as the first real fandom was the one for Sherlock Holmes. When the beloved character died in the book released 1893, the fans were upset and started to write their own stories with the detective, writing versions where he survived. They wrote what is nowadays called fan fictions. Fandoms can make it easier for people to express their creativity in different art forms. With fan fictions, they have the opportunity to create alternate endings of a story as well as creating completely new stories about their favourite characters. Sometimes their work are truly successful, like the novel Fifty Shades of Grey, which actually started off as a fan fiction of Twilight. They can write music with text based upon the stories or characters they appreciate. With cosplay, the fans can express their creativity by interpreting a character, often wearing costumes that they've made for themselves. Others prefer to draw their favourite characters or to draw the scenes that they have read in a book. Hey, not today, but yesterday I made my entire costume, which was a dress, a cloak and a staff and a hat, which took me a lot of time and it, I learned a lot of new skills from it, like how to sew new fabrics and how to do wood. So that's really healthy. I do a lot of drawing myself, so I like drawing fan art and it gives me more experience to draw different kinds of things that if I wasn't involved in the fandom I just wouldn't be able to draw because they would be weird. The creativity and common love the fandom is based on can make a big difference for everyone involved, not only the fans but also the creators and actors behind it. Fandom is a wonderful word that can be taken out of context in a negative way, but mostly fandom is a brilliant thing. It makes shows more successful than they already are. If you have a fandom behind a show, you tend to the show tends to transcend success and that's a really big word transcend because it means that you are bigger than the the viewing figures that the BBC say show so for, 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 for example for Versailles we get 1.8 million viewers on the BBC it's sold to 191 countries worldwide as, and there's only 196 countries in the world so globally it's a success but in terms of the BBC maybe it's not a success maybe it's not one as big as their shows but because it has a Versailles family, as they're called, uh, a fandom behind them, who make great art and cosplay and all that, the show then transcends success in viewing figures. It becomes bigger than them. When taken out of context, the main thing you hear about fandoms are the stereotypes, that fans become too obsessed and too rigid in their opinions, up to a point where hatred reigns and the atmosphere becomes really toxic. For example, after the Star Wars film The Last Jedi came out, Media showed examples of how fans were not happy with it, how they hated the new character Rose and sent a lot of hate to the actress, 
which caused her to delete all of her official social media. I mean, a lot of the stereotypes come from the fandoms themselves, because there is always those select few that take it too far, so they'll threaten like casting and stuff like that if there's something they don't like about a show or a book or something. Something they don't like about a show or a book or something. But I don't I don't think a lot of the time fandoms are quite chill. It's just there is that select few that are a bit nuts about it and take it a too far. But a lot of times like if you just stick with the right people, if you just stick to the right section of Tumblr, you'll be fine. It can be good, but it can also be really toxic. It depends what side you're on. You have to be careful you don't you know, cross that line because I mean, I mean, the majority of people fandoms are really nice. It's just some are, some aren't great. <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah, there can, there can be a lot of disagreement in fandoms. There's a there's a good side to fandoms and a bad side, and the bad side's what you want to stay away from. It can be difficult sometimes. There's a lot of people with different interests, different opinions, and that's what where the feuds start. But I think other than that, I think. It's, it's just where you need to be cautious what you do and say sometimes. But I think those kind of people, a lot of the fandom do alienate them if they're being incredibly hateful because we just don't want negativity. We do we like to be positive in these kind of things and help each other out. The stereotypes of taking it too far, being a bit too obsessive is still a thing that occur in groups of people that have a common love for something. For example, football fans. They are fans and in that way part of a fandom, but it's not something that is talked about in the same sense as the fandoms at conventions. In many ways it is more socially acceptable to be a sports fan who knows the names and faces of all the players in their favourite football team, to change the evening activities because a football final is considered as normal behaviour, but if a fan of a certain television series wants to do the same, that is questioned. Definitely, like when I was younger I used to be in a lot of like boy band fandoms and stuff like that, like I was your basic teenage girl but... But <laughs> so I was in a lot of that and my dad would be like, oh, don't be so obsessed with that, don't put your effort in something else. I'd be like, okay, but you're obsessed with this football team and doing this football thing. And he completely got it, but it is football fans are the exact same and can be as vicious as people that like bands or comics or TV shows or whatever and are in those fandoms. It's the same situation, it's just football is seen more as a norm. Though fandoms are still frowned upon and are based on the word fanatic, something everyone could agree on is that fandoms is a place for love, a place for everyone who feel like they don't fit in, that they have somewhere they belong. Um, well, I actually have had a lot of support because, um, especially before um, I came out as transgender, um, female to male, um, they actually helped me a lot with um, coming to terms with it and, you know, they have been really supportive, supportive of me and that's kind of actually part, they actually partly helped me, you know, do that. Um, I, I mean, if, if you're, you know, down or always there cheering you up, whatever, it's just something like saying, oh, it's okay, or sending you something that's like a kind of joke, you know, kind of a joke about the fandom. But if it's anything like that, they're always trying to like cheer you up because, you know, you're part of the community. It's almost like, it's almost like a second family, I would say. This is an amazing place, this is a wonderful place and the best thing about meeting fans is you get to see what makes, what about your performance or what about the show that you've been in, what, why it matters to them. And that's really nice when people say that, you know, like for Merlin, the show brought them through a dark time or that they were an outsider in school and Merlin was them and they saw themselves in Merlin and the show brought them strength over five years. That means so much more than anything else so it's um stuff like these like today is and yesterday and any other cons are great because it gives them accessibility to you rather than twitter or facebook or instagram or you know sometimes it can have a really bad thing and sometimes it has a really bad effect but what fandom should do is include people bring them together you're all united by the love of a show usually or an anime or a cartoon or a comic strip you know it's an inclusive thing, not, an, it's not a seclusive thing. So when fandoms get it right, they really do get it right. And it means that people come today dressed up, not dressed up, and feel part of a world. The fact that you guys gave up your night um, means a lot to me. That you chose to spend 
an hour with me when you could have gone home so people change their transportation just to be here it means a lot to me and it's this culture that I love more than anything I love our nerds because I'm a nerd man when it all comes down to it you can throw a hat and some fancy boots on this dude but I am still a cartoon watching video game playing comic book reading Dungeons and Dragons playing I beat up when I was a kid, I got made fun of, I was awkward. And out there in the world, I still feel weird. I still feel like I don't belong. But when I come in here, and I see people that, man. Reese. When I see people that come up and they go, I'm about to make the boldest, bravest, I'm gonna be me, and the rest of the world can burn. That inspires me. You inspire me, bro. You inspire me. Yeah, man. Out there, we're awkward. Out there, we're weird. And here, we belong. We belong. And we're all creeps. Yeah, we're all weirdos. What are we doing here? <laughs> we all belong here. We all belong here.